they're posting 17% net profits compared with Toyota and Volkswagen at 6%. You know, we see the stock continuing to go higher for the next decade, probably, or more. Well, look, for the next two, three years, Tesla's going to be king of the hill. And the question is, who has a shot at displacing Tesla? First, General Motors, Mary Barra said, we're passing them by 25. Flat out, that's not going to happen. GM produced barely 8,000 EVs in the first half of the year. That's embarrassing. All right, guys, see if you can figure this one out. What's pathetic, incompetent, full of shit, and completely useless? I'll give you guys a few moments. Leave your guesses in the comments below. You ready? Mary B.S. Barra, current CEO of Government Motors. Finally, at last, her bullshit has been called out live on air by former Tesla board member Steve Wesley, literally describing GM's current EV efforts as embarrassing. In this video, two Tesla bulls, Ross Gerber and Steve Wesley, discuss Tesla's recent annual shareholder meeting, EV adoption, Tesla's so-called competition, and plenty more. So let's get into it. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you enjoy these videos, there's a bunch of ways you can support the channel, access exclusive content and perks. Check out the links in the pinned comment below. If you want to take it to the next level, join thousands of members on Patreon to gain exclusive access access to over 100 Q&A videos, loads of exclusive content, exclusive access to my up-to-date 10-year Tesla stock price targets, and even access my Tesla valuation model at the investor support level and above. You can also pick up some Tesla, Elon, and investment theme merch in the merch store. So check out the links in the pinned comment below, and thanks for your support. I love talking about Tesla because so many people own this. So many topics to discuss. We're going to blow through them all. Ross Gerber is with us, president, CEO of Gerber Kawasaki Wealth and Investment Management. Steve Wesley, founder and managing partner of the Wesley Group. Thank you both for being here. Um, Ross, there are so many topics from new factories, a stock split, making this the most co valuable company in the world, and board seats. Um, are those what stood out to you, or is one more important than the other? Um, I, I think the most interesting and, and sort of important point that was made was really the scale and ambition of Tesla and Elon to get to, let's say, 10 gigafactories. And the thought process of what it'll take to scale to that level is really incredible. And, and obviously, if they can achieve this goal, they can. Tesla will be by far the most valuable company in the world. Oh, they will be. So, so it was an exciting meeting to really see Elon's vision played out. Uh, and really well articulated by him uh, yesterday. Yeah, right now we have four factories. We have um, Fremont, California, Austin, Texas, Shanghai, and Berlin. Steve, what stood out to you? Well, I think three things really stood out. First, it's a great day for shareholders. Price up 40% just in the last month. Uh, what's even better news than that is $53.6 billion in revenues last year. This year, we're predicting they're going to be at $87 billion. That's 62% year-over-year growth. No one in the auto industry is close. But I think the biggest single news for Tesla is the profitability. They've just posted their 12th profitable quarter. They have beaten all expectations. What's important to know if you peel back the onion is that they're posting 17% net profits compared with Toyota and Volkswagen at 6%. Now, this is a very important point to discuss, so pay attention. By the way, if you happen to know anyone currently short Tesla stock and you would prefer they didn't go bankrupt, maybe let them know this rather important fact, you know, the kind of people, oh, Tesla's valuation compared to this car company doesn't make sense. We say that over and over and over. Compared to some of the world's largest and quote unquote, most successful automotive companies, Tesla's already Despite their relatively small scale, e.g. a million and a half vehicles this year versus, say, a larger company like Toyota around 10 million, they're already three times as profitable at a small scale. The larger Tesla grows as a business, the more vehicles they're producing, the more profitable they will become. Economies of scale, more parts in common, more processes in common. This is fairly obvious to anyone who understands just some basic fundamentals about business and manufacturing. Never mind the fact that none of the world's larger automotive companies are seeing any growth at all in their production and deliveries. In fact, they're actually currently collapsing. Forget that. Never mind the fact that Tesla's growing more than 50% per year. Forget that. I mean, it's important, but let's just forget that. Even if we only focus on a single fact, Tesla's current profitability versus other automotive companies. It's pretty clear that comparing Tesla to an automotive company, go, oh, Tesla's valuation doesn't make sense. Look, Toyota's only this many billion dollars. That doesn't make sense. On mere profitability alone, forget all the other pies Tesla has fingers in. They're clearly in a league of their own. 
looking at Tesla through the lens of another automotive company, failing to recognize their incredible resourcefulness, their low overheads, their insane profitability despite their relatively small scale, their insane demand, the crazy wait times. You guys get it, right? Tesla is already the world's largest EV maker by volume, by miles. In addition, they're far and away world's most profitable volume automotive manufacturer. There are no other companies anywhere outside China that I'm aware of that are actually making any money selling electric vehicles whatsoever. And keep in mind, nice vehicles currently going extinct. So you can forget about that. There's plenty of companies today, Government Motors, Ford, blah, 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 who make plenty of money, plenty of profits selling ICE vehicles. A few years time, no one's going to be buying these things. So if they can't make EVs profitably, and people stop buying their only profitable products, their ICE vehicles, they're kind of fucked. It's important to understand this. Every time you hear somebody say the competition is coming, one of the Tesla Q dum-dums claiming that Tesla's valuation make no sense because look, Toyota, Volkswagen, blah, blah, blah. You know you're interacting with somebody who just doesn't quite get it. So record growth, great profitability. They seem to have solved the supply chain issues and the manufacturing issues others haven't. If they keep this up, they'll be a trillion dollar company and maybe more. Mm-hmm. So at this point now with, with Tesla crushing it, it seems that we're all in agreement, at least from what we're seeing, that it obviously is the leader in how um, they're pushing everything out here. We, we looked and we saw 20 million um, autos is the goal here. Is this going to be even more valuable, Ross? It's already at 900 and change from that five for one stock split back in 2020. It's up 31 percent. We have another stock split coming. Where do you see this stock going? Well, obviously, we're very big believers in Tesla. In my ETF, it's now a 12 percent weighting. And, and and just for context, in my ETF, Tesla is our largest position as well, approximately 100 percent of the fund. You know, we see the stock continuing to go higher for the next decade, probably, or more. So that being said, um, our current valuation, we think Tesla deserves 100 times multiple of earnings. If you look at what they're supposed to earn this year at $12, so a $1,200 price for Tesla seems about appropriate with their growth out there. But when you're talking about the future, um, Tesla's the kind of stock that can grow and grow and grow. And that's why we own it. And that's why we're huge believers in it. And we love the mission because it's so crucial to our society. Mm -hmm. Well, that's the truth. When people start to look at EVs, that's something that they love. Um, Steve, as you take a look, when you pull up Tesla, so many Twitter headlines come up and that wild card of what that means. Um, are there other names in the group that you like, Steve, equally or more? Well, look, for the next two, three years, Tesla's gonna be king of the hill. So just wanna make a correction there. Steve Wesley obviously misspoke, and when he said years, he actually meant decades. Now, I know he didn't really mean that, but I certainly do, and I stand by that. Now, I know that's pretty arrogant. Decades is a long fucking time. How could I possibly know? Well, I don't know, but, in the past, when I've made other predictions about things, I didn't know then either. And then when the time comes, it kind of looks like I did know. Why? How? Well, if you do enough thinking, project into the future, think about all the variables, you can actually get to a point with some situations, some companies in particular like Tesla, where I'm confident in saying no one's touching them. Their lead is unassailable, and they will maintain a dominant position for decades to come. Even if Elon Musk disappeared tomorrow, this would still be true. Don't get me wrong. Elon's a valuable asset. He'll help Tesla move further and achieve more. But... I do not see anyone running this company down from here, period. Give it a long enough time frame, sure, eventually Tesla goes bankrupt. Maybe it's a thousand years from now, maybe it's a hundred, I don't know. But next couple of decades, bruh, it is a done deal. I mean, Apple are a great example of another company in this situation. When Steve Jobs passed away, give or take a decade ago, a lot of people thought, okay, Apple are fucked now. And truth be told, they've done literally nothing. Now, no offense, but almost nothing since Steve Jobs passed away. Yeah, okay, some chips and some, whatever. No Steve Jobs, Apple's still going from a few hundred billion dollar valuation when he passed away to now, what, two and a half trillion dollars and still going. And I personally, personally have meaningfully contributed to that valuation in the last couple of years. I shudder to think the amount of money I have spent slash invested in Apple technology. I'm not even kidding by the way guys. I could probably have bought multiple Tesla vehicles for the same amount of money I've spent on my Mac Studio, my displays and blah blah blah. All of course specifically for creating content for you guys on YouTube. Occasionally a company will get such a dominant technological lead and establish themselves as a leader creating a huge amount of brand value and awareness that it really becomes challenging for anyone to even consider catching up. I do want to expand a little bit on this point because I know there's going to be some skeptics by a couple of decades. How the f***? Here's the thing. Companies are like organisms. They have their own DNA, their own culture. Not only does Tesla have the right DNA, they've got a culture of innovation, 
of extreme resourcefulness, of moving fast, of solving problems, of doing what matters and makes sense. There's very little bureaucracy and bull within Tesla versus every other company. This is the kind of thing and the momentum, and by the way, let's not even mention the A-grade engineers. Tesla has the pick of the bunch. The world's elite engineers all wanna work for Elon at either SpaceX or Tesla, and they get to. If you do take Elon out of the picture, Tesla still has an extremely compelling mission and an army of the world's best engineers, extremely talented people who really care about what they're doing. That's why they're working at Tesla in the first place. That stuff doesn't disappear overnight and it's important to understand this. I believe that Tesla's DNA as a company now is enough to ensure that they have won not only this decade, but the next decade or two as well. Of course, I could be wrong, but the good thing is the internet never forgets. And assuming I'm still alive in a few decades time, which I plan to be, in fact, I plan to be alive in a century, really, I'll save that for a video on another day. I really am confident that I can say today, Tesla's DNA as a company is enough to ensure that they will dominate the next few decades, irrespective of what happens between now and then. And I'm a big fan of accountability. Thankfully, the internet never forgets, so this prediction will be floating around in literally two or three decades time, Yes, I do think out that far into the future and beyond, and we'll know how things panned out. Had Tesla not mentioned their plans to develop a humanoid robot, and was it not clear to me that Tesla's built the fundamental building block of AGI? Maybe a different story. But that's all fantasy because the reality is Tesla is working on a humanoid robot. They are on the path to solving AGI. They're in a dominant position on EVs, on energy storage generation and supply. Oh, and the whole autonomy thing as well. I think what I'm trying to say is good fucking luck catching up to Tesla anytime in the next 20 to 30 years. But it's an important question. This is a multi-trillion dollar industry. And the question is, who has a shot at displacing Tesla? First, General Motors, Mary Barra said, we're passing by 25. Flat out, that's not going to happen. GM produced barely 8,000 EVs in the first half of the year. That's embarrassing. I absolutely love to hear this BS being called out. Congratulations, Steve Wesley, for calling it as it is. How many times have you guys and girls heard me use the term embarrassing to literally describe government motors and Mary B. Aspara? Embarrassing really is the perfect term. This company is a fucking joke. Mary Barra is a fucking joke. GM's publicly stated goals of overtaking Tesla by 2025 are a fucking joke. And anyone who takes the time to think through the implications, how do they actually achieve that? What does that mean? Will realize GM's pathetic, incompetent, completely useless, extremely dishonest CEO, Mary B. Aspara, is openly lying to investors, lying to the public, gaslighting everybody who will listen. Still today, well, at least fairly recently, GM continue to state their plan to sell more electric vehicles than Tesla in the United States by the middle of the decade. But when you do the math, it just doesn't check out. Yet they still say the same shit. It's unconscionable. And this is why I rip so hard on Mary B. Aspara. There are people out there who are too stupid to think for themselves. They hear a CEO go, we're going to overtake Tesla by 2025. And then they go out and buy GM stock. So thank you, Steve, for calling out Mary B. Aspara on her, wait for it, BS. And please, don't get me started on the corrupt president of the United States, publicly praising GM for leading the way with their extremely embarrassing EV efforts. You did it, Mary, you led, and it matters for me getting votes from people who are union workers. Ford is rising from the ashes here. They're doing a little bit better. They've produced 22,000 vehicles in the first half of the year. Ford E150 looks strong, Mustang, great vehicle, but they're gonna have to ramp it up too. If you look at this together, just 30,000 vehicles, look at Volkswagen. They produced over 220,000 vehicles in the first yeah. half of the year. They're going to be a much stronger competitor. 8X, what both American companies are doing combined. But no one's closing the gap on Tesla for the next two years. Okay. Tesla will be king of the hill. Uh, Ross, what do you think? I mean, I think of all these other names and Nikola and, and Rivian and Neo and Xpeng and um, some of the other ones that um, Steve Wesley just announced. Tell me your thoughts. Any great competitors well, here? Well, uh, yeah, there's only one. It, and I wouldn't even call it a competitor. I call it Tesla's little brother. And it's Polestar, which is Volvo's EV company, Polestar. which is producing yeah. more cars than uh, Ford and GM and Lucid and everybody else. The, the cars are great. And they've built a direct-to-consumer model like Tesla, app-based. They're using autonomy through companies like Luminar and, and using Google software. But the Polestar is a great car. And and it's never going to beat Tesla, but it's definitely like Tesla's little brother, and we're invested in this as well, as well in my fund. Now, I do consider myself somewhat of an authority on Polestars. After all, I've dated quite a few of them back in my sordid 20s. 
So I feel I can speak with a little bit of authority on this subject. In all seriousness though, Polestar doing decently as Ross points out, never gonna take down Tesla. And of course, given that I don't manage money for other people and my fund is 100% Tesla, I would never touch Polestar stock, but I do have to give credit here. Sometimes I'm very hyperbolic in my statements. There are some decent EVs out there, never catching Tesla, but they'll do okay. Polestar is one example, Hyundai are doing pretty well as well. And I think outside of China, that's actually about it. But Ross does have a relatively fair point here. Polestar is actually doing pretty well. Meanwhile, GM floundering around and literally embarrassing themselves. How about, um, Ross, just uh, some of the details? I mean, the three for one stock split, I don't know when that actually occurs. People may be buying ahead of the stock split as they often do, but also the Model Y on track to be the world's best selling car. The Cybertruck, the pricing is likely to go up and the specs are likely to change. Any details on any of those, Ross? Well, you know, I don't think the stock split matters materially for the story. It's just, you know, helpful for individual investors, I think. Um, I think the real story for Tesla is scale and Cybertruck. The truck business is where you want to be, and the adoption of Rivians have been huge here in California. Rivian has had a lot of success. They can sell every truck they make. They've just had uh, trouble making trucks like everybody else. But if Tesla can make a truck, you know, boy, the, the market will expand for Teslas dramatically, and, and we could continue to see enormous growth potential with Cybertruck. Definitely agree. Underrated point. People are not anticipating the impact of Cybertruck on not only Tesla's business, but on the pickup truck business in the United States and beyond. For those who don't know, the top selling pickup truck in the United States, just a single model, sells around 1 million units per year. In fact, the top three, almost 3 million units combined. Hypothetically speaking, just imagine, if Tesla were to reach a top three position in terms of pickup truck sales in the United States with the Cybertruck, that thing alone could be doing around 1 million units per year. For those of you who haven't seen my Cybertruck is Engineering Genius video, actually I'm pretty sure everyone's seen that, you'll understand this thing is going to absolutely blow the pickup truck market to pieces. Once these things hit roads, people see what they're capable of doing, get over the appearance, which is love or hate. I genuinely believe that Cybertruck has a shot at becoming THE number one selling pickup truck in the United States. Just for context, remember, Tesla's going to deliver around 1.5 million vehicles globally this year. Cybertruck alone could almost double Tesla's unit volume. Of course, we know Model Y and 3 will continue to ramp up and sell many millions between them. But I don't think investors are really grasping the potential impact of Cybertruck. It's killing me inside as a Tesla investor knowing Tesla doesn't have enough battery cell supply. They also have to ramp up the 4680 and they also have to develop the manufacturing techniques for the Cybertruck. Ford's electric F-150, the F-150 Lightning, decent product. They basically have the market to themselves. Rivian can't produce shit. I mean, Rivian's R1T isn't really a conventional pickup truck. It's more of a lifestyle pickup truck. You know, great to chuck in your handbag when you're going out clubbing on the weekend, but maybe not something to have on a work site necessarily. Now, don't get me wrong. It can perform some of those functions, but the R1T isn't really competing directly with an F-150. The Cybertruck will be. At this point in time, make a half decent electric pickup truck and people will buy it. So for the next year, maybe year and a half, maybe even two years until Tesla can really ramp up Cybertruck volume, anyone producing a half decent electric pickup truck is going to see great sales, assuming they can actually make them. Yeah. And Steve, are you a big believer in Elon Musk? I mean, he's really brought it to this point. Should he stay in or you think some people want him out or some people, different ones on the board? Because too many people on the board are yes men. And that's what some of the investors are saying. But he's done a tremendous job. Well, look, I served on the Tesla board for three years, and without a doubt, Elon Musk, love him or hate him, and there's a lot of both, he is the uh, Thomas Edison or Steve Jobs of our time. No one else has done anything like he's done. One of the issues you didn't touch on is not only is Tesla the dominant leader in EVs at precisely the time where every automaker in the world is going all electric, their energy business is becoming the fastest growing part of yeah. the company. Yeah. So they're quickly yeah. expanding into other areas. Remember. Elon has said repeatedly that he believes over the long term, Tesla's energy business will grow to be at least the same size as their automotive business. Today, it is a literal spec. But of course, as investors, we don't give a fuck about today. We care about tomorrow, unless we think we're investors, but we're actually traders, in which case then we probably only care about three seconds from now. But assuming you're an investor, not an idiot slash gambler who thinks they're an investor, looking out far into the future, is what really counts. Tesla's solar business will continue to expand, but in particular, the real place to focus, in my opinion, is stationary storage, both at the grid scale and home scale. There's a power walls in homes, in residential homes, and Tesla's mega packs for larger scale deployments. 
As we've heard from Tesla, they prioritize vehicles and automotive at the moment. They are still cell constrained. They can't get enough battery cells. But any cells Tesla has above and beyond what they need to put in vehicles heads to storage. Meaning since Tesla's been supply constrained from day one, they haven't been able to make anywhere near as many stationary storage products as they would ideally like to. But as the 4680 cells ramp up, Tesla continues to gain additional cell supply. We are going to see Tesla's energy storage business explode. This is the sort of thing that makes your valuation go up. But at the end of the day, no other auto firm is growing 62% a year. No other auto firm is this profitable. No other auto firm is expanding into the new innovative areas like yeah. autonomous vehicles and now energy. That's not an easy no trick point. to pull, and uh, I wouldn't bet against him. Words of wisdom from Steve Wesley there. Don't bet against Elon. If only I thought to make some merch designs, you know, shirts, mugs, hoodies, long sleeves, phone cases that had don't bet against Elon on them. I'm sure it'd be a top seller. Oh, wait, I already did, and it is. If you want your own don't bet against Elon merch, check the link in the pinned comment. That is why you're on the show. This is why you're both on the show. We love your insight. And I hadn't realized that you served on the board there. Steve Wesley of the yeah. Wesley Group, Ross Gerber, Gerber Kawasaki Wealth and Investment Management. Thank you both very, very much. Always great to hear from a couple of Tesla bulls who, generally speaking, say things that make sense. And I love the fact that Mary B. Aspara has finally been called out. GM's efforts in terms of electric vehicles truly are, in the words of Steve Wesley and some guy on YouTube, embarrassing. I do, however, just want to leave you guys and girls with a final observation. Despite both Ross Gerber and Steve Wesley being Tesla bulls, very bullish on the company, they respect and admire Elon Musk, they acknowledge Tesla's insane lead. I actually think they're both really missing the bigger picture. They're massively underestimating Tesla. They're downplaying their lead, and they truly do not understand what the next couple of decades look like for this company. Don't get me wrong, they're bullish, they're headed in the right direction. But I think the scale of the opportunity that Ross and Steve see ahead of them in terms of Tesla versus the reality of how things will play out, I think they're actually missing the majority of the opportunity. And of course, time will tell. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm deluded. I'm happy to acknowledge that, but I do stand by my comments. Maybe I'm misunderstanding, but personally, I don't expect that Ross or Steve anytime in the near future will be talking about Tesla at a 10 plus trillion dollar valuation around the end of the decade. Meanwhile, that's about where my Tesla bear case lands at the end of the decade. I acknowledge I could be completely wrong, but the good news is the internet doesn't forget and we're only going to need to wait about a decade to find out. And speaking of, don't forget to join Patreon with the card in the corner or the link at the pinned comment if you want access to my Tesla stock price targets. As I said, even in the bear case, Tesla around a $10 trillion market cap at the end of this decade. Worst case scenario, I'm not even going to talk about the base case or the bull case. But if you want access to my Tesla stock price targets, you can join Patreon with the link in the pinned comment or the card in the corner. You'll also gain access to well over 100 exclusive Q&A videos and loads of other content and perks. So I'll see you over on Patreon and I'll see you in a decade. I'm Stephen Mark Ryan. This is Solving the Money Problem and I love you all. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you enjoy these videos, there's a bunch of ways you can support the channel, access exclusive content and perks and get some free stocks and crypto. Check out the links in the pinned comment below. You can also pick up some Tesla, Elon and investment themed merch in the merch store. If you want to take it to the next level, join thousands of members on Patreon to gain exclusive access to over 100 Q&A videos, loads of exclusive content, exclusive access to my up to date 10 year Tesla stock price targets and even access my Tesla valuation model at the investor support level and above. So check out the links in the pinned comment below and thanks for your support. And if you're still watching, you're awesome. I read every single comment on this channel and I really appreciate your feedback. So if you've got any thoughts on today's video, questions, comments or suggestions for a new video, let me know in the comments below. Check the cards on screen now to browse the merch store, join Patreon or watch the next video.